Welcome to our interviews on uh, going through with students that are dealing with challenges that they faced with the COVID infection. Um, I just kind of wanted to go through some questions with Margaret here. And so just a brief introduction. We know that students have all been faced with um, diversity of challenges during this COVID infection around the United States. At South Dakota State University, our faculty and staff want all students to be provided with opportunities to go anywhere from here. Here's an interview of Margaret providing an insight on her decision on attending South Dakota State and the challenges that have faced her as a student during this extraordinary time. Welcome, Margaret. And Hi. could you tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of who you are and where you're from and what year you started at South Dakota State? Sure. So um, I was born in Akron, Ohio, but we moved around a lot as a kid. Uh, we, you know, we, we've lived in a majority of different areas. We've lived in New England, we've lived in the Midwest, um, and currently we're in Nebraska um, right now. So um, I think I graduated from a high school in Iowa and I attended um, a community college there and got my uh, associate's degree. And then after that, um, I think what, mainly led me to att attending uh, SDSU was um, I got in-state tuition for being um, uh, someone who lives in the state of Iowa. Um, they also had an equine minor, which was something that I was very interested in putting towards my degree. And uh, I also really wanted to be a part of their marching band, uh, the Pride of Dakotas. And um, it's definitely been a really amazing experience so far. I know the COVID thing kind of interrupted, interrupted stuff, but um, overall it's been a great experience. What instruments do you play with the uh, Pride then? I'm a piccolo player. Okay. Um, All right. Oh, that sounds like a, you gotta have a lot of wind with that then. Oh yes, tiny but mighty. <laughs> That's what we usually say. Oh, cool. Um, what kind of uh, decided you for you to take biology then? Um, well, for this particular biology class, it was a requirement for my major. Um, I know that I had an option between taking one of these two bio classes um, to put towards my major, but I decided to go with the more basic one just because uh, my high school experience didn't really cover a lot of the major basics in biology. Um, so I figured, you know, I would refresh everything and uh, get to learn some of the basic stuff more in depth um, before I kept going with uh, the rest of my degree. Good. We're glad that uh, Margaret chose biology. Nice. And so you said equine, um, you know, with equine, do you have horses or are you majoring? What are you kind of looking for for equine? So um, I'm an animal science industry major. Um, I myself have not owned horses, but that's, that's my future aspiration. I would like to go into the horse industry, maybe uh, try a training career, which, be, which would be really, really great. Um, at the moment, I just got a new job at a really, really nice um, uh, barn working for these amazing people. They're both AQHA champions and it's a real uh, privilege to be able to work for them and get that experience. No kidding, that is an awesome experience. Um, we know that your spring semester has definitely looked different than how we thought it was going to be as you kind of mentioned. Kind of tell me about your world during and after spring break and how the COVID infection has affected you. Um, it's, it's been interesting for sure. It's been kind of a weird adjustment. Um, you know, before spring break, you know, I guess nobody really thought that it was going to take off as, as uh, hard as it did. Um, so for the first few weeks um, during and a little after spring break, I was very limited with my resources because a lot of the things that I had and needed for my classes was still back at my dorm. Um, so there were some things that I had to do without and uh, try and adjust so that I could keep up with the courses online. Um, so it was a bit of a challenge, but once I got everything back, I fell into a rhythm, I think, 
and uh, I think the I know it was a very quick adjustment that a lot of the professors needed to make, but I think they executed it very well. Um, and I think it helps too that while I was getting my associate's degree, a lot of my classes were online as well. So I had a little bit of familiarity with um, the way the uh, classes were set up uh, in a virtual classroom. Okay, all right. What kind of classes did you take online before? I know that's off the topic a little bit, but what kind of courses did you take online already? Um, so far, I have taken, let's see, I took an anthropology class. Um, I took, a lot of my electives, I think, were mainly online. I took a majority of them during high school. Um, I had an economics class, uh, music appreciation, speech, um, and uh, there were a couple more that uh, kind of fulfilled the general requirements for my degree. Um, so I've definitely had some experience in different areas of study when it comes to online classes. Okay. Um, speaking of online courses, just a little bit, what kind of advice would you give since, you know, everybody's going to be doing some kind of hybrid online coming up, you know, all students will be faced with some type of online learning, you know, at least 50% of the time, what would some of advice would you give to students that aren't, are pretty um, naive to online or new to uh, online courses, what advice would you give to them? Uh, bug your professors. <laughs> really, really try to communicate when, with them. Um, I know that when I was first getting started with online classes, I was not familiar at all with the setup and where things needed to go to be turned in. So communication is really the big key. If you have any questions, you should definitely reach out and ask them or find someone who does know um, how to deal with the problems that you're having. Because there was a point where I kind of tried to take it all on myself and try and figure it out on my own and it didn't go very well. So definitely reach out if you have questions. That would be my biggest advice. Good one, thank you. Then kind of the last question I've got for you is you know, with all uh, bad things, there's always that silver lining. So kind of what silver lining did you see with this shift in learning um, from the traditional always being in class and that sort of deal. What, what did you see that was a positive thing that came out of it? Um, I think the biggest thing for me, or at least that made it easier for me, was I had more time to really sit down and learn the material. Because, you know, in class you're in a room with a lot of other people and sometimes the professor is going through slides they could be moving too quickly or they didn't cover a topic in depth enough. Um, and you know, you can't, in that sort of setting, it's hard to um, fill each individual student's needs because everybody's different at learning. Um, so for me, having the ability to really sit down, look over uh, the lectures and presentations and you know, write down notes at my own pace, I think that really helped um to give me a much more um successful outcome in the majority of my classes okay well thank you margaret for joining me and kind of sharing your story um you know and you definitely can share this video on the social media that we'll have we'll be posting this on the rabbit razor so you know share this with your friends and everything and but i appreciate your interview so thank you for your time yeah thanks for having me